Lick Create Wax Castable Resin. Let's take a look. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, ever heard of Lick Create Resins? I've had my eye on them for a while, so I was thrilled when they sent me their wax castable resin to review. Actually, when I opened the box, I was like a kid at Christmas as they kindly included some samples from across their resin range. I get so excited by the possibilities all these various resins give us. Pretty soon, we're going to be printing parts for our cars, for our homes, and even for our spouses. Though that last one will probably be the most demanding. Even the exterior packaging impresses me. These bottles are metal and this burnished silver colour with black, white, orange and blue pleases my sense of aesthetics. So their marketing department has done a good job. When you open a bottle of Liquorate, you get a real sense of product pride. They arrive in a sealed bag. The lid seal needs to be broken. Beneath this is a pull release plug. They've taken every step to make sure that there's no accidental spillage. And I guess that's important, because if you want to liquidate resin, the chances are it will have to arrive in the post. The company is based in the Netherlands, a country reputed to be laid back and friendly, with high street shopping facilities that my wife won't let me go and visit. There are resellers throughout the world including Pro3dshop.com here in the UK. But you can, of course, order directly from Liquorate.com. As for price, I was surprised. It's nicely priced in comparison to similar European products. Yes, it was all looking very good, until I tried to pour the stuff out of the bottle. It was solid. They'd sent me a brick. Were Liquorate somehow in collusions with YouTube support? Actually, no. This is a wax castable resin, with the emphasis here on wax. My workshop at this time of year is around 16 degrees Celsius, which is pretty cool. However, a quick read on the Liquorate website informs me that a minimum temperature of 18 Celsius is needed just to liquefy the resin, and an ideal temperature for printing is between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius. I'm certainly glad that I'd built my own enclosure heater. Actually, if you saw that video, you'll recall that I was awaiting the arrival of a hotbox from Wambam Systems. Sure enough, it arrived safely, and it's every bit as good as I'd hoped. It even has a little thermometer of its own. The only drawback is the clear panel at the front, which could potentially let in stray UV light, though you can, of course, buy flexible UV resistant sheeting. Alternatively, you could just blank it off with paper or tape. So, in the hot box, my D2 got cozy with my heater and the bottle of resin. And whilst I waited for the resin to reach an ideal temperature, I looked again at the Liquorate website and was delighted to see that the D2 is listed. Now, I can't promise that every printer is covered here, but this was an unusually pleasant surprise. Long-time viewers will know that I'm vocal about companies sharing the settings for their resins, and I have put a few on the spot, though some continue to ignore me. I'm looking at you, Power Resins. So all the information I needed was here, which meant I just needed something to print. Well, my recent altercations with a certain company and their alleged support team left me in the mood to basically kill things. So I decided to take out my mood in the mythical world of Skyrim, an old and dear friend. It was there, whilst enjoying the beauty of the surroundings, that I came across the Nordic Shield, and I thought, I've got to have a go at making one of those, and so I did. Can you see the dragons? I never noticed them during the gameplay, 
but there's three of them. And if you're interested, I've made this STL available nice and cheaply on my Etsy store. I added a couple of thick supports, as I always do, to properly anchor my prints. But after that, I did nothing special, just using 25 point medium supports in lychee. Certainly I didn't need the extra thick supports used with other castable resins. One point I did change though, was the raft thickness. Licreate recommend a thickness of 0.1mm, which is thinner than the default on lychee. And as this means less resin is used, I was happy to oblige. So the toasty warm resin got poured into my D2's toasty warm resin tray, and this was the result. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I printed an Amerilabs Town test print at the same time. Now think about this for a moment. This is a wax resin that freezes up below 18 degrees Celsius, and it's now in a room with a temperature of only 16. So I needed to make sure I didn't linger too long. And more importantly, I needed to make sure that my IPA wasn't too cold, as the uncured resin would simply freeze onto the print. I could have placed a sealed bottle of IPA inside my hotbox during printing, and it would have been perfectly safe at these temperatures. But instead, I turned on my ultrasonic cleaner, which heats up quickly. I was then able to wash the print for two minutes in toasty warm cleaning solution. And here's the result. That is a very nice print. It's crisp and it's detailed. Even the Ameralabs Town print was suitably impressive. Supports clipped away very easily. These were surprisingly rigid for a wax resin, but there was no nasty fragile snapping. The front looked amazing though the back was a little saggy where more supports would have helped. So I decided to risk it all and sand the back with 400 grit sandpaper, which worked very well. Then I gave it a very quick wash to remove any dust. Licreate did tell me to keep an eye on the print. A dull matte finish is what we're looking for. If it's shiny, it's either not been cleaned well enough or it's been over cured and both of these issues can lead to poor castings. A good tip at this point is to leave the print to sit for 15 minutes after washing to allow the IPA to properly evaporate. You should then start to notice the print dulling slightly, meaning it's ready for curing. Licreate recommend a minimum curing time of 15 minutes, so I cured for just 20. There were a few divots left over from clipping that were easily repaired with wax, and the print itself attached very easily to a standard wax sprue. The burnout cycle is typical, with a max temperature of 750 degrees Celsius. Now, I am very pleased with this. I'm very much a self-taught amateur with no professional training, and I feel this resin has given me all it can. So what do I think of Licreate Wax Castable Resin? I'm impressed. The price is very reasonable in comparison to its competitors. 
the company is keen to provide the information its customers require to use their products. A very simple step that so many companies fall short on. It prints beautifully and it casts as well as any castable resin I've ever tried. It clips and it sands, sticking to wax sprues as easily as it should. The only drawback is temperature and even in my cool workshop I've shown this can be easily worked around with an enclosure heater. And don't forget Liquorate are not on their own in preferring warm temperatures for their resins. So as long as you can print and clean in the warm you'll have no issues. Honestly I really like this resin. It's easy to use, it's a good price and it does a great job. I have the best part of a full bottle here so you'll no doubt be seeing me use it again. So that's it for this one guys. Take care and thanks for watching.